Suppose we were given a rhombus. How could we find the area of the rhombus if we knew that the diagonals measured 40 and 30? So I'm going to call diagonal 1 40 and diagonal 2 30. Now you'll recall from chapter 5 that the diagonals of rhombus are perpendicular bisectors of one each other. So I know that this is going to be, diagonal 1 is going to be broken up into two parts that are 20 each, and diagonal 2 will be two parts that are 15 each. Now, how would we go about finding the area? Well, why don't you take a, a try at it yourself, and then come back to the video to figure out if you did it the same way I did. One way would be to treat the rhombus as a collection of four right triangles. So we would multiply four times our triangle area formula, and we would get a total of 600. Or you might recognize it as two larger triangles, which are not right, but that have altitudes of 15. It's no surprise that we get 600 again. Well, either one of these is a, is a, a legitimate way of finding the area, but let's kind of generalize it in the video on how we can find the area of all kites. Okay, as that last example just pointed out, there are definitely ways we could deconstruct the, a formula for finding the area of kites, and just treat it as two or even four triangles. But kites come up often enough that maybe it's worth figuring out a formula for their own. So let's take a look at where a formula might come from. Well, if we were to break up a kite into those two um, triangles, the triangle of um, EKI there, and the triangle ETI, then the area of the whole kite would equal the sum of the areas of those two triangles. Well, the area of triangle EKI would be one-half EI times KFs. So EI would be the base and KS would be the height. Then we would add to it the, the area of triangle ETI. So that would be one-half EI again plus the altitude ST. Of course, you'll recall that the um, diagonals of a kite are perpendicular. So one of the diagonals can serve as the altitude to both of these triangles. Now, if I do a little algebra and I factor out a one-half from both the terms and the common factor EI, I'm left with one-half EI times the sum of KS and ST. Well, from the figure, it should be pretty obvious that EI is one diagonal and KT is the sum of the other two. So I can have a simplified formula for the area of a kite as one-half D1 times D2. That's not too bad. That's pretty easy to remember. Now be very careful. Get that in your notes and make sure that you notice it's multiplication of the diagonals, not addition. Because as we just learned with trapezoid, this formula looks a little bit like the area of a trapezoid, but that, of course, is addition. So let's not confuse the two. Okay, but this is a video about the area of kites and related figures. So what other figures should we be considering? Well, let's go back to a flow chart we saw in Chapter 5. You'll recall that all quadrilaterals could be categorized as parallelograms, kites, or trapezoids. And kites, if they had two consecutive congruent sides, could be characterized as rhombuses. And, of course, squares were always rhombuses. So our area formula for kites is also going to work for rhombuses and squares. So let's make sure we get that in our notes. That the area of a kite is 1 half D1 times D2. The area of a rhombus could also be considered 1 half D1 D2. And the area of a square is 1 half D1 D2. So at this point in your notes, on your area formula summary sheet that I suggest you keep, you should have two formulas for the area of a square. Base times height, and now you have one half the product of the diagonals. Since a rhombus is also a parallelogram, we could use the, par the parallelogram formula for area for a rhombus also. So that could be base times height, or just one half the product of the diagonals. It all depends on the information you're given. Okay, Ramblers, please be keeping your notes up to date. Thanks for watching, and I hope this helped. Okay, number four on page 529 is an example of finding the area of a kite using the new formulas. So I like to first write out my formula. You'll recall that the area of a kite is one half the product of the diagonals. Well, you also recall that 
the diagonals of a kite are meet at right angles, and that the shorter diagonal is bisected by the larger diagonal. So I can see that if one half of the diagonal is 8, then this lower part of the diagonal is also going to be 8. So my diagonal 1 is 16 units long. In order to find diagonal 2, I'm going to have to solve these um, right triangles. So the triangle on the left is clearly, knowing my triples, going to be a 6, 8, 10 triangle. And the triangle on the right is going to be an 8, 15, 17. So adding 6 and 15, I see that my second diagonal is 21. Then I just multiply to get the area of the kite. That product, of course, is 168. Okay, let's take a look at number 5 also, because it's just a good example of how these two, uh, or how more than one formula can apply to the same type of a figure. Okay, if you look at part A, you can see that we're trying to find the area of this rhombus, which we can use the area of a kite formula for, because a rhombus is a kite. Since I know that one of the diagonals is 14, I can find the other diagonal by recognizing that when the 14 is bisected, I get a right triangle that is has 7 as one leg, 25 as the hypotenuse, so the other leg must be 24, which makes the entire diagonal 48. So when I multiply these two out, I get 336. Now in part B, I could use the 1 half diagonal 1, diagonal 2 again, but that could mean a lot of work. For here, it's much easier to just use base times height, because after all, a rhombus is a parallelogram. So I'm going to use 25 as my base, and my height is 20. So 25 times 20 equals 500. Okay, so it's really important that you know both formulas for, the, uh, for rhombuses and for squares, again, based upon the given information. All right, let's take a look at one more problem. That's number seven. That usually gives students trouble in this section. All right, number seven, they give us one diagonal, it's 13. So I'm going to use the 1 half D1 times D2 formula, and I'll plug in 13 for diagonal one. But I need to find diagonal two. Okay, recalling that we have um, a right angle where the diagonals meet, if I look at just the upper half of the kite, and I, this is a right triangle, because although not all kites meet at right angles, the two sides do in this one, and so I can use the altitude to the hypotenuse theorems. So I'm going to say that h is going to be the upper half of this diagonal, and so h squared equals 4 times 9. Solving for h, I see that h equals 6. So since the shorter diagonal is bisected, I'll know that the longer diagonal must be uh, 2 times h, or 12. So my area is going to equal 1 half 13 times 12, or 78. Okay, Ramblers, thanks for watching.